Chers auditeurs, Dear listeners, bonjour. Welcome to Comme d'Archi Podcast Season 5. Saison 5, dans le monde fascinant des architectes. And in the architectural projects. Je suis Anne-Charlotte de Ponte, passionnée d'architecture et docteur des universités en histoire de l'archi. I am one of the spokespersons of Anne-Charlotte, who is a PhD in architecture history. Merci. Thank you. D'être avec moi aujourd'hui. To be with us today. Et And maintenant. Now. Lundi en français, place au talent. And Wednesday, let's talk projects. In English, of course. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archi. Dear listeners, good morning. This is Esther on behalf of Anne Charlotte. It's good to meet you again in season 5 of Comme d'Archi, episode 19, with a text about Charles Guy, architect, by Charles Guy himself. I was born in Vernon, Eure, in 1959. My parents were both teachers in Aisy sur Eure. My mother taught English, and my father French, and sometimes history or manual labor. My godfather, Bernard Caner, my father's childhood friend, was an architect in Albi, in the Tarn region. I spent my childhood in Aisy until the age of 14, when I had to leave Aisy and the family home for Évreux, where the nearest high school was located. After repeating two years in 10th and 11th grade, and a lot of adolescent wandering, I finally passed my baccalauréat in June 1978 with a small distinction. During this period, I started to take photographs, which were silver-based at the time. I had a very rusty camera, a Lubitel II, a Soviet-made 6x6. My best friend's father ran a professional photo lab in Évreux, and it wasn't unusual for us to spend Saturday night and Sunday after a movie shooting, developing and printing our photos until dawn. Until 1978, like a lot of boys, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do with my life and the guidance counselors of the time knew nothing about careers that might have interested me. Flying planes, sailing on the Calypso with Cousteau, applied research, courting moray eels, what have you. After an internship with my architect godfather, I finally opted for architecture, because I must have sensed that being an architect opened a lot of doors, and that long studies will give me time to think. Easily enrolled at UP2 in Nanterre at the start of the 1978 academic year in the Bussy Le Normand studio, the first two years were laborious. But, little by little, I began to understand what architecture was, to acquire a little architectural culture. And then, year after year, I became rather good. Medals on small, then on a long project, Christian de Portempart was part of the jury. I finally graduated with unanimous honors in 1985. My project involved the redevelopment of an industrial site, a former paper mill located in Sorel Moussel on the Eure, into a regional leisure center. At the same time, I was working in Parisian architecture firms, and it was then that I realized that salaried work was definitely not for me. With my diploma in hand, I applied to an architectural competition, in association with a major Parisian agency I'd worked for, to design the rehabilitation of an industrial site into a leisure center in Vernon, my hometown. Just right for me, I thought at the time. Wrong move. Not even allowed to compete. That's when I decided to put my pencils away once and for all and come up with another ID. 3D computer graphics to simulate architecture at the drawing board stage and explore it in all its forms? What a great idea! In 1985, I set up Icon Infographie with my brother Olivier, who had just graduated from the ESSEC Business School. We started working with huge, expensive machines and imaging software developed at the University of Paris 8 by a sort of Professor Tournesol, Michel Bray. 
We won grants from the ADI, Informatic Agency, a number of entrepreneurial and innovation awards, and even made the cover of Computer Graphic World in the USA. For 15 years, we worked hard to develop not only the technique and know-how, but also the market, which at the time didn't exist. We worked with some of the most inquisitive architects and designers of the day, including Philippe Stark, Dominique Perrault, Constantini et Regambal, associated with SCAU for the Stade de France. We also worked for some of the most prestigious clients of the time, such as TDF, French Telediffusion, ESA, European Space Agency, and STIF, Paris Regions Transports. Understanding that the direction of history is to integrate digital imaging into the very heart of agencies and project management structures, and unable to develop our business sufficiently to make a decent living from it, we decided to close the Econ Company at the turn of the year 2000. In 1998, I also set about developing a major project for the year 2000, Balloons by the Millions. To mark the turn of the millennium, citizens of the world were invited to send their best wishes to humanity through the air, using helium balloons in the colors of the globe, with a personal message in an envelope bearing the project's colors and postal address, BP 2000, Paris. All of which is, of course, biodegradable. Anyone who finds the envelope is asked to send it back with the most beautiful stamp they can find, with the most beautiful messages, to be published in a memorial book for humanity. Despite a parliamentary support committee of over 30 MPs, a petition with several thousand signatures, and even a letter from the Dalai Lama, the Mission pour l'an 2000, Mission for the Year 2000, and the European Commission showed no interest in the project. I decided to do it alone. I developed my first website, which was translated into 10 languages, including Esperanto, with the help of volunteer internet users from all over the world. I set up a worldwide helium database with the help of Air Product, who agreed to sponsor the project. In the end, more than 30,000 messages were sent from 26 countries, and some 350 envelopes were returned to BP 2000 in Paris. Nevertheless, For this project, I won first prize in the Ile-de-France region for the year 2000, ex with Mystic, a famous Parisian street artist. After this project, I set myself up as a freelance multimedia director, focusing on web design, which I still do, while continuing to work from time to time in the field of 3D architecture. In 1992, I met Michel Aubaron, a well-known painter of architecture and structures at Comdarchy. We've lived together for 31 years and were married in 2017. In 2001, we decided to set off together on our first long-distance project, Colorado. Painting for her, organization, photos and video for me. At the time... I was super proud to be shooting with one of the very first digital cameras, a Sony digital Mavic Air with 2 megapixels. Three or four times a week, I published our roadbook and photos on the internet. Instagram did not always exist. It was new at the time. On our return, Michelle exhibited her paintings at the Galerie de Nesse in Paris, and I showed my photos for the first time. This project was a revelation for both of us, a sort of life project, and we're going to continue. We take on projects, exhibitions, and all that goes with them. Bridges of Fame in 2003, Bridges in New York and San Francisco, Morocco in 2004, Southern Morocco, Brut de Shanghai in 2005, Dinar Folie in 2006, Paint in La Habana in 2007, 
role in La Habana for photos, Secret Défense in 2009, Ma Vie de Château in 2012, Versailles, Made in Hong Kong in 2009, Chicago Express painting and Chicago Sessions photos in 2015, Cambodia Tourist Tour in 2018, Brooklyn Boogie in 2022. And for as long as I can remember, Corsica. I shot and directed the films featuring Michel painting in situ on almost all these projects. We've also designed together and I've technically produced and published books on certain projects. In addition to exhibitions with Michel, I have exhibited my work several times, both solo and in major group shows. 2014, Subjectif Objectif, Galerie des AAB, Paris, Solo. 2016, Chicago, Vue sur Mer Gallery, Dinard. 2016, Expo for Art, Al des Blancs Manteaux, Paris. 2017, Printemps de la Photo, Romorantin, Guest of Honor. 2017, Art in the City, Espace Art et Liberté, Charenton-le-Pont. 2018, Photo de Corse et de Chicago, Barnes, Porto Vecchio, Solo. 2023, In Situ, Espace Art et Liberté, Charenton-le-Pont. And November 16 to 26, 2023, Thursday to Sunday, 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., 2023, Urbanité, Photos of New York and Chicago, Galerie des Abbés, Paris, solo exhibition. Come one, come all. Dear listeners, thank you for tuning in. Let's meet again next week for a new Kamdashi in English. And until then, take care of yourselves. Goodbye. Thank you for listening. Thanks to Julien Rebourg, sound engineer, who is collaborating with us today. Don't forget to tune in to our previews on Instagram at Comdarchi Podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, don't hesitate to promote it by giving it five stars and a little comment on Apple Podcast or on your favorite podcast platform. And above all, subscribe to listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon. And until then, take care of yourself.